Welcome back. It is late. So with that being said, this is why when I go to NHL games, I don't go on a really busy night in the NHL because then I'm not doing the review until I think the latest I did a review was like two in the morning and I realized this this doesn't work because it just kills me the next day. So we're going to start things off looking at Chicago and St. Louis. Uh, of course, for Chicago, long out of the hunt for a playoff spot, St. Louis is still alive. Despite everything, that's gone on over the last few weeks. St. Louis is still alive. Uh, and tonight's game, uh, pretty impressive, although less impressive stats from Peter Mrazek tonight. So, on their first shot, St. Louis scores. It's Cairo from Letty and Hofer at 204. For, so, for Joel Hofer, I think that's his first assist in the National Hockey League. Good on him. Uh, Cairo then adds another from Sodden Butchnevich, 42 seconds later at 246. That's the second shot they had. And then on their f third shot at 437, Krug scores from Kessel and Alex Alexandrov, and that's when Mrazek's night is done. Uh, St. Louis wasn't done scoring in the first, though. At 659, Bull Duke scores from Thomas and Shen. It's 4 0 for St. Louis, and that would be the score after the first. In the second period, the only goals from Chicago. Uh, Kershev with that one from Kurczynski at 8 minutes and 40 seconds. So it's 4 1 St. Louis after two. Third period uh, at 10:01, Robert Thomas scores uh, from Shen and Bolduc. So Bolduc with a goal and an assist. Uh, before the game is out, Chicago would get a little bit closer. Sligert scores from Donato and Entwistle at 16:51 for Landon Sligert. It's his first NHL goal. Didn't mention him in the preview. Maybe that's why he finally got it because I've, I've talked about Sligert before. So with the 5-2 win, St. Louis goes to 42-32 and five, and combined with this result, yeah, they're not out of it. Uh, on the Chicago side, they're 23-50-5. and five. Uh, Shots, 9-1 St. Louis in the first, so just the one shot for Chicago. Uh, second period, 10-8 Chicago. Third period, 9 shots each. Final shots, 26-20 for the St. Louis Blues. Power plays, Chicago goes 0-2, St. Louis 0-3. The hits, 28-18 for Chicago. Uh, Mrazek, 0 saves on 3 shots. That's how I was able to say first, second, third shot. Uh, and then Soderblom, better numbers for him because he saved a puck. 21 saves on 23 shots there. Hofer saved 18 out of 20. Your three stars, Kyra with two goals, Thomas with a goal and an assist, and Bolduc also a goal and an assist. So for St. Louis, hope is still alive. And so that's the reason I'm wearing St. Louis for this review because I, I do like to see some sort of tension in the West even though I, I still don't think St. Louis is going to make it. But we shall see. Because in Edmonton tonight, this is a statement game by the Oilers. Uh, they didn't have Connor McDavid. As I've said before, though, and I think I said it this morning, too, they've played pretty well without McDavid before. So they get the only goal in the first period due to those Oilers. At 9.37 is Cody Ceci from McLeod and Nurse. So Ceci, a player who at times this year, Oilers fans haven't necessarily been that happy with. Um, he's been good lately, though, right? So it's one nothing Oilers after one. Second period at 5.38, Matias Ekholm stays red hot. He scores from McLeod and Perry, and then at 8.06, Hyman scores from Nugent Hopkins and Dreisaitl. So Hyman's up to, what, 53 now? Yeah, a lot of goals. Uh, so 3 nothing for the Oilers after two. Again, statement game uh, for Vegas. I, I do think there has to be some concern in Las Vegas. I know Stone, the first game of the playoffs, yada, yada, yada. But the reality is they just, this this is not the kind of result you're looking for from Vegas at this time of the year. In the third period on a power play, uh, Dreisaitl scores from Nugent Hopkins and Hyman at 6 minutes and 50 seconds. Then Vegas scores shorthanded during the next power play that Edmonton got. Uh, Kolasar gets that one from Hannafin and Carlson at 7 minutes and 50 seconds. So a shorthanded marker to offset the power play goal. Uh, but Holloway scores at 9.56 to make the score 5-1. to one. That's your final score in this one, the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, they pull within four points of the division lead. They do have two games in hand. They're 48, 24, and 5. Um, they don't play tomorrow. I'm looking at that board. Yeah, nobody who played tonight plays tomorrow. That's why I was able to do the whole preview board before I went to the Vancouver game tonight. With the loss, Vegas 42, 28, and 8. And they do kind of have to look over their shoulder because St. Louis is right there. St. Louis has 89 points. Uh, and for Vegas, they have 92. So they're three points up. They should make it. But again, we're in should territory, not that they have. Uh, shots on net, 7-6 Edmonton in the first, 9-6 Edmonton in the second, 9-6 Edmonton in the third. Final shots, 25-18. So really good defensive game for the Oilers. Power plays, Vegas didn't have one. The Oilers go one for three, but they also allowed the shorthanded goal. Uh, hits, a lot of hits in this one. 49-35 easily, the game with the most hits tonight. 
Uh, Hill saved 20 out of 25. So on the good side, Aiden Hill comes back from injury and plays. On the rough side, he allows five goals on 25 shots. So yeah, uh, Skinner saved 17 out of 18. Stuart Skinner continuing to show he's a pretty good goaltender. Uh, three stars, Ryan McLeod had two assists. Uh, Nugent Hopkins had two assists. And Holloway, uh, your third star, had the goal uh, that made it 5-1. to one, And he did that unassisted, so kudos to him for that. Uh, but yeah, for the Oilers, they are still alive in the race for that first place in the division. Uh, and the Vancouver Canucks have left that window open with this game against Arizona. But again, having been there, it felt different. It, it just did. To me, it felt different. If you were there, let me know if you th thought it felt different. Just watching the Coyotes skate around and thinking, this could be their last year as the Arizona Coyotes. How many of these guys are still going to be here in the fall? What's going to happen? Um, and, and all of that all that stuff. Now, there was no scoring in the first period, and honestly, there were large stretches of that first period where there wasn't a lot going on, uh, but Arizona was definitely out of sorts. So, as I said in the review in the van, and I'll say it again here, I, I got the feeling that the coach might have had a chat with them in between periods and, and said, hey, you know, the stuff that's going on at home we can't do anything about, but let's go get two points. I just say that because it, it feels like that's what you would tell a team in that situation. Um, and again, for the Canucks, got to be weird for them playing against a team that, according to, to the media, they, they might be on their way out of town. And so, yeah, uh, Arizona does score first in that second period, though. At 546, it's Brown from Gunther and Kolyachonik. And this has been the Canucks' problem lately, too. They let the other team score first. I do think that if they can get a healthy Thatcher Demko in net, that'll help. Uh, Shilov has been doing as much as he can, so is DeSmith, but neither of them are Demko, and it's part of the problem the Canucks have had lately. Uh, JT Miller answers late in the period from Myers and Hughes at 18.32, and it felt like the Canucks might get something going, but then they gave up a goal within a minute. At 19.28 is Kolyachonik with a goal to go with his assist. Uh, Kraus and Gunther with the assists, and I double-checked. I was like, did Kolyachonik have a goal before? Yes, this was his second career goal. So it's 2-1 Arizona after two. Third period, uh, at 155, Dylan Gunther scores from Cooley. Gunther had a remarkable game, and Cooley I was very impressed with. His speed is fantastic. Uh, again, a lot of good young players with the Coyotes. But the Canucks would answer at 11-18 Garland, because if anybody was going to lead the Canucks back and get a, to get a point, it was going to be Connor Garland, uh, Hoaglander, and Hughes with the assists. Quinn Hughes had a very good game, just needs to make sure his shift lengths are toned down a little bit. Because uh, he was the one that coughed up the puck that allowed, I think it was the Gunther goal. That was, he was just, he was exhausted. He was done. Uh, at 16-18 on the power play, Elias Patterson. Nice goal there. He scores. Uh, Hughes with the assist. Ties the game up at three. It was a 7-30 start. So, of course, it's going to overtime. What else is going to happen? Uh, and at 3:51, after the Canucks had killed a penalty... Uh, Canuck fans were not happy with the power plays that were given out tonight, but I, I, I don't know what to say. I thought the Canucks were sloppy. Uh, Cooley would score at 351 from Gunther and Jersey. So Dylan Gunther had himself a night. Uh, final score, 4-3 to three in overtime. The Coyotes go to 34-40-5 and five with the win. With the overtime loss, Vancouver 48-22-9 on the season. So again, they're now just four points ahead of the Oilers. I just, I want to see Demko come off LTIR. I want to see Demko in the net before the playoffs. Uh, but the shots in this one, 8-2 Canucks in the first, 9-4 Coyotes in the second, 11-4 Vancouver in the third. In the overtime, both teams had three shots. Coyotes with the one that matters. Uh, but there was that nice penalty shot attempt by Hronik. Just do it and go. Uh, final shots, 26-18 for Vancouver. Uh, power plays, Arizona 0 for 5, Vancouver 1 for 4. So Vancouver does kill off five power, five penalties. They do get a power play goal. you got to find the positives in here. Uh, hits were 29-19 for Vancouver. They were physical tonight. The five power plays for Arizona tells you at times they crossed the line a little bit. Uh, three stars were Gunther with a goal and three assists. Again, best game I think he's had this year. Uh, Quinn Hughes had three assists and Cooley a goal and an assist. Ingram saved 23 out of 26. He had a smart game. Uh, Shilovs, again, 14 saves on 18 shots. I'm not going to dump on the goalie here, but I missed Demko. All right, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I'll talk to you again soon.